people you got? Well, I got 120 on the exterior that I'm buying for material and rock. How many square feet do I got? 800. He said, now try this. Okay, I've got the same lineal footage that works there, but now I've got 100 feet more. That's the kind of thought process that we're using when we build houses. We're trying to economize as much as we can and outthink some of the stuff. We believe that for years we built houses that were sustainable houses, but they were so expensive, you know what, they were in the 750 to a million dollar range. Um, we're doing a house right now that's in San Antonio, it's 1,500 square feet, uh, it's in the mid 200s, and um, it's being verified by the uh, National Association of Home Building, uh, their green building standard, uh, and the, the score on the house is emerald, it will be the, basically the second highest scoring house in the entire country. So we can do it at a lower price. Yes, sir. Do you have a lead to score on that house? No, we did not. We have used LEED for homes before. We've used different standards. Right now, the only standard in the country that has an ANSI certification is the National Green Building Standard. And basically, that is a, an organization of standards for uh, building departments and everything else. Uh, LEED for Homes, I am a member of U.S. Green Building Council, and um, they're trying to get their program verified right now by them also. But right now, the only one who has it is the, the, the Green Building Standard. Is this the home in Gray Forest, the building San Antonio Green talks about? Yeah. It is a house. It is in Gray Forest. It is uh, the first uh, build green San Antonio level three house. I was the first one to build. The, the model was the first uh, level two house. Um, one of the keys to being able to, to build a house that is sustainable is building a tight building envelope. That's really the key to it. Um, we have built with a lot of SIPs. We have used um, spray foam. We've used ICFs. But for us, what we've got down to is, is a cost. Now, for we can build conventional walls, get spray foam insulation in the walls, um, and our walls are all built off-site in a plant using finger-jointed studs. So the key to that is what was going to a landfill, we only have boards that are maybe two feet long in solid material. So what was trash at one point, now has gotten to the point where we're reusing it. So not only do we get points for it, but it's just a smarter way and a usable way of the wood that we can use. Um, and we find that dollar for dollar, it's a better investment for us to frame it that way, use spray foam in the, in the um, walls and the ceiling, um, and we end up basically saving enough money to cover the PV array. Um, we, we've had people who have used ICFs, we've used SIPs, and, and we think they're both good products, we're not gonna debate that, we just, for us it's the cost. We're concerned about the actual bottom line return on investment. Could you clarify, you put the spray foam in at the factory or on the site? No, it's on site. So basically it's the, the walls are built in a factory, they all come out, and then we just basically assemble them there, we use truss roofs, and then what we do is use spray foam there. Yes, sir. Did you, you say that by building off site like that, it's less expensive than two by four stick? Yeah, we have found that it is just because of the labor that we're saving. Um, basically, they're charging us about 89 cents, the factory is, to build the walls, and they're just pre-assembled. So the walls are pre-assembled, and basically, it costs us a dollar is what they're charging us for framing labor. Framing labor is now starting to come down somewhat, so it's almost to the same point. Um, but one of the things that we're trying to do is, is all of our exterior walls, we're trying to frame with a different kind of pattern. Years ago, when you got to an outside wall, we would have uh, two studs would be a channel, is what it would be called. And we'd have two studs and a flat panel, and we'd nail it into it. Well, what we've come to the realization is, there's no way to put spray foam in there. And so, on the model house, I had one of those corners, and so I took it apart, and uh, took the drywall off after we'd stuck it on. And you could feel the air coming through where the channel was. So now we're using ladder blocking on everything on outside walls so we can make sure and get the spray foam sealed off. That's the real key to what we're doing is sealing off the exterior. How thick are your outside walls? They're just two by fours. Yes, ma'am. Say over 30 years, does your spray foam desiccate inside the wall? No. I mean, we don't have nothing that's 30 years old at this point. Um, but there was, a, there was some problems with this stuff years ago when it started in Canada. Um, there was some off-gassing with it, but basically that's all been resolved. They don't think no, no. In, in yes. terms of the spray, you're using soy. Uh, some of the houses we're using soy, yeah, but not necessarily all the time. Much more expensive. It is more expensive because of this the 
the structural integrity that you gain with a spray foam, are you able to go with 24 inch on the center instead of 16? Well, that gets back to kind of a structural thing. And I started out as, as, a, as a, a carpenter's uh, apprentice in the union. So man, I am for 16 inches on the center with everything. I mean, I want to shear panel everything. Um, I grew up in uh, Southern California where the ground shakes a lot. Um, you go into our houses, we got wall ties, we got hurricane clips. People walk in there and go, well, this place ain't going nowhere. <laughs> but it's just kind of what we do, you know. It's just, for a thousand bucks, we're not gonna, you know, it, it's, I sleep real well, so. Again, here's some of the spray foam that's done on site. Uh, is, is everybody here familiar with spray foam and how that process works and what it, what it does? General idea. Um, so basically what we're doing is we're spraying the walls and then we're spraying the rafters. We're spraying the top because now what we have is all of our air conditioning ducts are inside that. In our model house what we did was we put up a, uh, a thermostat where the attic access is. We put a piece of glass there and then put a thermostat that never got above 78 degrees all summer long. So it basically, if you go into an attic in Texas in the middle of summer, it's 140 degrees, okay? That's how bright is this? We're trying to send 70 degree air across a house in 140 degree air with, what, half inch foam wrapped around the air conditioning ducts? We just need to start, start thinking smarter. So by putting the air conditioning on the rafters up at the top, the air conditioning now is in what's conditioned a considered a conditioned area. So um, on that 3,700 square foot house, we only have four tons of air conditioning. If you spray the rafters, how do you deal with a roof leak that tends to migrate down the inside? Well, we use um, half pound foam on the roof, and what it does is the water will come through that. If you use closed cell, if it has, it has a, a moisture barrier, and you'll never be able to find it. So that's, we really don't want leaks. Open cell? Open cell. Yes, sir. Uh, you're answering an open cell? Yeah, open cell. Yes, sir. On well, the air conditioning, what do you use for that? They're just heat pumps. Just heat pumps? They're heat pumps. Any particular brand or whatever? Well, we're looking for at least a minimum of 15 to 16 sear. So that's where we're trying to start. Again, uh, and we'll, I'll get to that and we'll show you how that works. Again, just some more spray foam so everybody can kind of understand how that works. Yes, sir. So is there, is there any attic ventilation? No, there is additive ventilation. That's one of the real things that we're starting to deal with right now is there's a lot of building departments and a lot of building science people who are saying, hey, now that you've sealed this off, what are you doing up there? Um, we have a two by six inch register that's up there and a return air. So we are pushing a little bit of air across that just so we don't end up with any kind of mold or anything that's in there. Um, it's a lot of people don't, a lot of builders don't, but we think that's just the way to go. It's not hurting us. The register is, is above the foam? The register is in the ducts. There's ducts that are in the attic, and so what we have is, is we've cut a little hole and put the register in the side of the duct, and so it has a little register that's on it. And we have one on the return air. So we are getting some kind of air movement in the attic. Um, it's kind of like building a, an igloo, uh, if you can imagine that. So we're tightening across the top. So you've got to be able to, to change the air. Um, there you go. The goal is to control the inside environment and limit unwanted infiltration of the outside environment. Yes, sir. You're not venting the attic to the outside. You're venting it through the AC. It's venting through the AC, but we are venting it. One of the things that we're doing is, is that we are using uh, an ERV, which is an energy recovery ventilator. So we are changing the air in the house three to four times a day. So what we're doing is, is we're taking the outside air, we're bringing it in, it crosses in, in the ERV itself, and then it goes into the inside condition. So we're being able to control all the molds, all the allergens, everything that's on the inside of the house. When you build something so tight and you just seal that off, you're going to create mold, whether we like it or not. Um, again, part of the tight building envelopes, important to have good windows and doors. Another thing that people never realized for years was fireplaces. We used to always have fireplaces on the outside walls of houses. Well, now they've come to the realization, you know, it would be on the end of the wall and it would be sticking out on the two foot or whatever it was. Well, they've come to the realization, you might as well go open a three foot window if you have a metal firebox. 
because that's it's it's letting everything because there's never did anybody ever insulate behind the boxes they always insulated across that wall and the metal boxes basically we we don't like fireplaces <laughs> unless you have a, a real fireplace very seldom they're, they're basically it, it's a cosmetic appearance we put them in because customers want them so we get the most efficient one we can and we get real good glass doors to seal them off because they basically you might as well open a window with these things 